Hello! Oh my gosh, you guys loved my last wood burning video, which is a great thing because I loved it too, and I'm doing another one today, obviously. I actually have two wood burning videos, this rainbow rose and then this bow, which was in the testing the walnut hollow wood burner. So I am interested in getting another wood burner that's a little bit better quality than that one. But hey, I was able to make these things with it. So I mean, it's, it's okay. I'll link those videos below along with my DIY party wall. Welcome to any of you guys who are new here. My name is Sarah. I like to post artsy videos along with some DIYs drawings. Last week I did a drawing with my old childhood colored pencils or Crayola ones and I think it turned out pretty cool so I'll also link that below. I post a new video here every single Friday so if you never want to miss out please ring the bell to turn on notifications but now without further ado let's get on into this video. Oh I forgot to mention that I am actually in Oregon right now. Just a mini update. Follow me on social media if you want to be updated more. All right now let's get into it. This time for my canvas, I'm going to be using something that I haven't ever tried before, which is a piece of basswood, a legit slice from a tree trunk or giant branch. I ended up getting this one from Hobby Lobby. I think that they have them at basically every craft store, but instead of $8, I did use a 40% off coupon, so it was a few dollars cheaper. I am loving the look of this already, the rings on there, the bark, the only thing is there's some sawdust that I can't get out. I didn't try too hard, but yeah, that's the only thing that I really have an issue with. Before actually burning the wood, I am going to sand this down and make it a little bit more smooth. Just so you guys know, whenever you comment on one of my newer videos, I read every single comment. Even if I don't reply to your comment or even heart it, which I try to do right when I upload or within like the first week, I do read them. So just know that your advice, like just anything, if you have any like encouragement for me, if you just want to say, hey, I read those and I really appreciate all of your feedback. So I am sanding this because a few of you told me it might be easier to burn the wood and not have the tool skip around if I sand it. P.S. Did you see the smile in the sander? The piece is now completely sanded and I'm going to move on to sketching out a mountain outline. So a few rigid, jagged triangles of various heights. If you do not feel comfortable doing this freehand, I did mention in the previous wood burning episode that you can use carbon paper, like a transfer paper, or you can even like cut out a stencil and maybe draw your outline around that. Anything to just make you feel like you have more control. The way I'm doing it is completely fine also, but erasing could be a little bit difficult if you accidentally press too hard and even sometimes if you don't, it doesn't all get removed. Although sandpaper could help you get rid of of any faint lines that may not have erased. Or if you want to freehand with the wood burner, be my guest, but I don't think that that's something I'm interested in. Not quite yet anyway. This is a point that I used in the previous video with the rainbow rose. It's a detailing tip and it kind of cuts into the wood since I am using kind of a softer wood, which was pointed out to me in another comment, by the way. I mean, I kind of knew that because if I do press my nail down into it, I can get a mark in the wood that way. I did switch out the tip. I'm doing this while it is not plugged in, not hot. So please do this while the tool is not hot. If it is hot, then you need to use pliers for sure, uh, maybe gloves. Just read the instructions on your tool and the safety guides and everything like that. So you just saw that I turned the temperature up on mine to quite a high setting, almost to the top. It's between the orange and red. I have a very basic, pretty cheap wood burning tool by Walnut Hollow. Um, if you get something that's a little bit more um, professional then you will have more options with the temperature but this works great for me I'm just doing some tests here to see um, the different variations of burn and 
the darknesses that I can obtain with my specific tool and tip. And I just did this on the back of the wood slice since I don't have another one. And the back is obviously going to be against a wall if it's going to be displayed as room decor or in your living room or office or wherever you may hang this so the back does not matter and I'm using it as testing ground. To the person who recommended that I change my tip, by the way, thank you because I feel like this is working quite a bit better. It definitely isn't digging into the wood as much and I really, I thought that it just wasn't as small and detailed as it actually is, but I'm having a pretty easy time doing this. I think that sanding helped a little bit but there are still some places in the wood that I am catching the grain and I know that you know it was brought to my attention that it's easier to burn with the grain but I do have lines that are going in opposite directions of the grain so I can't really avoid that completely there are you know times when I turn the wood or I turn my body and try to get a better angle because there are some spots that are more difficult to burn than others and it just doesn't flow as nicely in some spaces as it does in others. But for the most part, I think that this was a lot easier to burn than the rose. I think just having more practice, having a different type of wood, having the sanding, having a different tip in place. There are so many different variables, so many factors that go into the ease of this trade. I did go back and darken these initial outlines of the main mountain peaks. I wanted them to be a little bit thicker and darker than the other lines inside for the ice caps and just like kind of the texture of the rocks. You could also mess around with the temperature a bit, but to be honest, I left mine at around the same place and I was able to get a bit of variation, not really with the color of the burn, but just the thickness since I did go back and make some of them wider. The final thing that I am doing with the wood burner before moving on to color is creating these lines of texture. I would say that the initial outlines of the mountain peaks took about 30 minutes, then adding the ice caps took about another 30-40 minutes. This part on its own, adding the lines in, took probably an hour to an hour and a half just for these little lines. I know watching wood burning on video can be a bit deceiving because it looks like it is gliding on like butter and it doesn't take very long. It kind of looks like drawing, which is what I say in every video I've done with this so far. So I do like to show a little bit of it in real time, not too much so you guys don't get bored, but most everything else I speed up. So it definitely looks like everything was done in the blink of an eye, when in reality this piece, just the wood burning part again, took uh, around two to two and a half hours-ish. The lines and dots at the very end that I'm doing here were so quick to do, but I feel like this really makes it look like a completed piece. And honestly, you don't have to add color. If this is the look that you want, you can stop here and it's not going to be like, oh, she or he definitely wanted to take the easy way out. No, I think that this looks really, really nice. And if you want more of a cabin style feel, then I would stick with this. I think it looks pretty cool. But personally, I want to do more to this piece. I really like working with different types of mediums. So I want to add color. Um, I have done these mountain pieces in the past. So as you guys know, I have decided to use Copic markers to color in this week exclusively. I'm not using Sharpies again with them. Here are all the colors that I have to work with. On the chart, it doesn't look like I have very many, but then on this giant paper, well not giant paper, but it looks like there's a lot of colors. Here you can see I have a pretty nice variation. I definitely want to get more, but for now, I feel like these are great because I do have these four really light grays to work with that I have swatched for you on the back of the wood slice. At first I thought I was going to go with the cool tones, but I actually decided to go with the warm grays. With these, I am dividing each mountain peak into two sections. I'm using W1 first, which is the lighter tone, and I'm coloring in each section as I go. Coloring on wood is not going to ruin your tips, at least it didn't for me, as long as your wood is smooth enough and the extra smoothness from the sanding is definitely going to help out. So yeah, as long as you are careful, it should not ruin your markers, it shouldn't 
fray them or tear them up, but that's just, you know, from my experience, I definitely would be very careful. There was a point where I wasn't exactly sure how to divide the mountain peaks because there were some parts that overlapped. I decided on this look, uh, I don't know, I don't have a ton of experience with shading rocks in, but then I did move on to the W3 or the darker warm gray and I filled in the rest of the blank spaces. I will say with this one, I was really, really nervous that I had ruined it and messed it up because of the way that I colored with the ink. There's so many overlapping spots that it doesn't look smooth and seamless, but I did go back in and shade some more, and I feel like just adding that extra texture helped to make the darker gray, you know, where that kind of gets liney a lot. I feel like now everything looks more cohesive just because of the extra shades and texture that I put in. Say hi to Leo guys! He always likes to know what I'm doing. So while he was sitting there I swatched these different rainbow combinations and I did decide on this one here. You can see I have the markers placed out. So I did a very light outline of the top arch of the rainbow. And now it's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to see me color in first the red, then orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. To be honest, this was actually pretty difficult. I should have outlined everything and placed guides down for all six colors, but I thought if I just kind of put the guide for the red, it would be really easy to follow since there is, you know, kind of a natural arch with the grains of wood or the rings on the wood. But after the yellow, I had some difficulty with the green and I actually had to sand away a little bit because I ended up getting the angle of the curve wrong. It just started looking a little bit wonky and I made some parts of it too thick. Uh, when I finally got to the purple, I think it turned out okay. Uh, it definitely isn't the greatest curve for the purple, but uh, what can you do? So I moved on. I didn't like that little knot in the wood, that dark spot, so the way that I decided to hide it is to put this white star. And then I continued making a few more all over to kind of make it look like a magical scene. I'm definitely not putting a unicorn in this, but uh, that's kind of the vibe that I get from this. This piece just overall makes me very, very happy. I decided to leave the background blank so you can see the wood grain a little bit. I like that look, but if you guys don't, you can definitely just uh, add a blue sky or a sunset colored sky, anything that you want. Maybe try to use a paint in the sky. Oh, and for the white stars, I did use a Posca paint pen, by the way. If you were wondering, but a white gel pen can also work. I did that in a little bit of the detailed areas since the tip was smaller. Super quickly, I want to touch on the varnish. I have not used one yet and I have not experimented with that yet. I've read from quite a few of you about finishing my pieces and that it would look really cool with some sort of varnish. That's something that I'm going to experiment with later on as I work on more and I do plan on making more, so check out my wood burning playlist in the description box below and in the iCard. I'm definitely going to have more. I'm actually working on one for next week. Please, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Turn on bell notifications if you never want to miss an upload here. I do post every single Friday, and I would like to try more wood burning in the future, the very near future. I'm having a lot of fun with it. P.S. This awesome sweatshirt is from Target, not Spons, but it's cute and warm. Also cropped. And have a great rest of the day. Bye!